Security agencies are ready for those issuing threats against Anambra governorship elections, says the National Security Advisor, Babagana Mungunu. And as tempo for the 2023 presidency increases, a South-South group canvasses support for Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Kong. The National Security Advisor Babagana Mungono has warned individuals intending to cause conflict to behave themselves as the governorship elections in Anambra State draws close. He said the law enforcement agencies will not sit by idly and allow innocent people be terrorized, adding that anyone who wants to disrupt the process will be brought to book. He added that all security agencies have been told to conduct themselves well and exhibit the highest level of professionalism and restraint and operate within the confines of the law and not be in any way um, or act in any way that will jeopardize the exercise. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is Francis Chilaka, a political affairs analyst, and Terence Kwanum, a security expert. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, Marianne. All right. Um, I'm going to start with you, Francis. Um, it's very interesting. Yes, we know the premise of this conversation is the security threat um, uh, and, of course, the need for uh, there to be free, fair, credible elections devoid of any violence of any kind. But let's start by looking at the reasons why federal government seems to be very interested uh, in Anambra State. We remember where there was an insinuation or a statement that was made by the AGF that was termed uh, was um, referred to a lot of people, uh, referred to by a lot of people as out of turn when he um, somewhat said that uh, there might just be a state of emergency declared in Anambra, which also uh, got reactions from even, even the governor and other political parties, including the PDP uh, and, um, you know, APCA. Um, why do you think that the federal government is so interested in the Anambra elections? Um, I mean, other than the fact that there's an APC candidate in that election, um, what is responsible for all of the threats that's been coming? Um, of course, we know that IPOP has its own issues uh, and the sit-at-home order, but is it that serious and needs the federal government's intervention? Um, well, I think first and first is that um, um, the issue playing out in Anambra State, just as what's been playing out in the entire southeastern state, is not an issue for uh, threats by anyone in government. It's an issue that calls for dialogue. And that is an avenue the government is not exploring. The government should explore a dialogue at this point in time. You know, if you're issuing threats, IPOC, for instance, is saying, sit at home. They're, they're, you know, and if all the um, citizens or the indigenous, everybody in Anambra State decides to sit at home, then there will be an election. So the point is that I think that it is politically motivated. Uh, the, the federal government, the APC led government, is, as far as I'm concerned, they want to take over an Anambra state at all costs. And that is why they are not looking at the issues on ground, the issues of security threats. You can't be calling for an election in an environment that has been threatened by you know, security and unknown gunmen over a period of time. But that's why, they, but that's why they came up with the idea, I guess, of you know, saying we might just have to call for a state of emergency because we think that things are getting out of hand. And you're also somewhat saying that, well, you can't be calling for elections if there's insecurity. So the government may have been right if when they were, you know, saying let's have a state of emergency. Maybe that might quell the situation. I'm just saying. The question we should be asking this government is what steps have they taken to unveil the so-called unknown government that has been terrorizing the entire southeastern states? That's the first question that the government should answer us. Who are these unknown gunmen? And how come that the unknown gunmen that have been terrorizing the entire Eastern State operate and disappear before the security operatives will appear? You know, so deploying the entire police force to an Anambra State, the question we should ask is, does it solve 
the security issue in Anambra State? Does it stop the security issue in the entire southern, southeastern states? It does not. So the government should sit down and dialogue and find a way out of this. It is only dialogue. Nobody, no, at this point in time, we can't be saying, okay, the government takes this stand, IPOP takes another stand. No. What we need to resolve every crisis that has been, you know, terrorizing the entire country is dialogue. Government must come down from a high hills to sit down with the people and dialogue and find a way forward. Quantum, you are a security expert. It's very interesting when Francis says government has to come down from its high horse. And when we say government here, I'm guessing that the state governments also have a role to play because this is happening uh, in their backyards, li literally happening in right before them. It's happening every day, whether it be in Imo, whether it be in Anambra. So if there has to be a dialogue, should that not start with the state governments before we, start, we even get to talk about the federal government? Uh, it's quite interesting that uh, uh, the situation in Anambra uh, has taken this turn. It's for, it's for all of us to learn from it. And then uh, uh, we should be able to know how to handle this situation. Because what we are dealing with today is the creation of this government. And in Anambra today is the creation of the Buhari government. And uh, they have mishandled the whole situation. Uh, to the stage we are today. And uh, but for this particular election, and uh, we are receiving all these threats. First, we are moving the entire police force, like three DIGs, like 14 commissioners of police, about uh, AIGs, uh, and next XYZ. I think those number of police people to, uh, uh, to go and be involved in the city pity alone will intimidate uh, the good people of a number of states. Uh, to be scared of coming out to perform their civic duty. And two, uh, I don't understand the level of uh, dialogue that the federal government have had with uh, the stakeholders of Anambra and to a large extent the Southeast, and that it has gotten to the level of a threat. And so for every security situation, there's every need to consult the stakeholders that are on ground uh, to be able to proffer solutions based on the recommendations they will give you because they are the locals living there, and they are the ones that know exactly what is happening on ground. And so they should be able to give you the right inter that uh, you are going to use to be able to end those crises. And so we expected them to have uh, ensued in the dialogue with the stakeholders to avoid this level of threats and uh, this level of... Uh, uh, I think we lost his um, connection. But let me come to you, Francis. Again, um, when he talks about Intel, I remember uh, speaking with the um, information commissioner in Anambra State yesterday about, um, you know, the rumors of the elections not holding, IPOP saying that they're declaring a sit at home. Um, IPOP has also come out to say that they're not saying nobody should go out to vote, but if you want to go out and vote, go ahead. But they themselves would be sitting at home. Uh, and he did say that the, the, the atmosphere th that seems tense is being um, stirred up by the opposition and that they're trying to make the situation look bad, even though it may not be as bad as it seems. Um, but for someone who's from the southeast, I do not know how, when was the last time you visited the southeast, but is it as bad as you see or you hear of it in the news? Um, you see, when, when, when you talk about sit at home, I, I think this is um, where we all need to be very, very careful. Um, the whole idea about sit at home, declared by IPOB, the, 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 the people themselves are now the ones implementing the sit at home. It's no longer an issue of IPOB asking people to sit at home. You know, I, my, my, my mother just came back from the, from the East, and, you know, she, she told me clearly, she said, Mondays, everybody sits at home. You don't need anybody to tell you to sit at home. In other words, what we have playing out in the South is, which is what has played out, even in the, in the, the, the North South, not, I mean, not East, where you have Boko Haram and all of that. The difference between them and IPOB is the fact that Boko Haram and the, the bandits are, you know, going about killing and all of that. But the South is uh, saying sit at home. And the sit at home is now not, no longer being enforced by force the people on their own are beginning to sit at home. You know, and then if, if you look at it, you know, with all the number of military personnel, police personnel, 
that is being deployed to Anambra State, who do you think would want to come out to go and vote? People would be more scared because you're creating more fear than, you know, dousing the situation. So rolling out all the, the policemen and all of that to Anambra State is still not the solution. It is not the solution because when you, when you put so many policemen and uh, security agencies on the street, in other words, you are helping IPOB to even uh, uh, achieve its sit-at-home uh, uh, instructions because people will be so scared to come out to vote. So it's not a matter of whether it is that test or mm -hmm. not. The truth of the matter is that there's a lot of um, issues going on in the Southeast. And the truth of the matter is also that the state government and the federal government have failed to sit down and address these issues by dialoguing with everyone involved. Mm. Now, let's talk about voter apathy. Um, I hope that Quantum is back. We'll go back to him in a bit to talk more about security. But back to Francis. Let's talk about voter apathy. I mean, already you said, from what you said, uh, that most people are now even implementing the city at home by themselves because IPOB has come out to say, well, you do not necessarily have to obey it, go about your businesses. But how does this play into voter apathy? Of course, the politicians need the votes of the average and Ambrarian. And, and, and again, to avoid hanky-panky, for want of a better word, um, people need to go out again, vote, and protect those votes. So let's talk about the issue of voter apathy. And all that's happening, um, most people might say that all of this um, exaggerations of security, insecurity in the state might be playing you know, on the mentalities of the voters so that they would be scared and stay at home. Some other people are saying, well, um, this should also push people to come out on election day to protect their votes. Where do you stand? Well, you and I know that um, uh, the National Orientation Agency um, and INEC have not done, um, they've not done so, so well in educating the Nigerian people when it comes to voting and, uh, you know, carrying out their civil rights. They have not done well at all. And with what has happened in the last few uh, months in the Southeast, a lot of people are not interested in voting. A lot of people are not. And as such, a lot of people don't even have voters card. Even when I next said they were, um, you know, going through the process of, you know, the, um, getting new people to register and validate their voters card, how many people really came out? So we need, we need voters' education in Nigeria. It is very important, not only for the Southeast, not only for an number election. Unfortunately, everybody goes to sleep after the elections. It shouldn't be like that. We should have a situation where after the elections, the National Education Agency, INEC, you know, the Ministry of Information and all of that, should be out there educating the people mm -hmm. on their rights to vote. Unfortunately also, Nigerians believe that their votes don't count. Mm -hmm. And that is some, that's a mindset that needs to be changed. People believe that their votes don't count. I mean, I mean, between you and I, you know, we've seen several what has happened in some elections where some, some, in some states where people claim this is who we voted for. And then the courts will decide who becomes, you know, the person that takes over. But I have a different perspective and you might not, you might not agree with it, but if we keep saying that our votes don't count, how come the, the, the politicians are interested in buying it if it doesn't count? You know, the thing when you say politicians are interested in buying it... Um, but they do buy it. Some people sell their Well, they, 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 the thing is that the politicians provide money for, like, for people to not their consciences. At the end of the day, I've, most people will tell you, I believe in voting. I vote. I have, I've always been by practicing it. But there are people who believe that it doesn't count. And a lot of Nigerians believe that. A lot of Nigerians believe that. Let us just get the money we need from the politicians at this point in time and go home. But I keep telling Nigerians, when you collect 5,000 naira, um, two, two, two mudras of rice and all of that from the politician, you have not get your conscience for the next four years. And that is why it is difficult for us to ask them to be accountable, to be transparent, and to give us good governance. Okay. So we need to look at our electoral laws. This is, it brings us back to our electoral laws. We need to look at our electoral laws. We need to make governance unattractive. We need to create a situation where, if I'm going to contest for an election, 
I must not be expected to spend millions in order to win. We need to draw a line. And this is what uh, the present government promised Nigerians when they came to power, that they were going to give us an electoral law that will satisfy the Nigerian people. Um, this is I, 2021. We do not have that. I, I really don't want to go into that because, uh, again, <laughs> um, who are the people who are responsible in drawing out these laws? The same politicians. So let's let's put a pin there. Let me go to Quanam. Quanam, um, the full weight of the police is actually uh, in a number of states. Of course, we will be seeing a lot of deployment, as you had spoken of earlier on. Um, but the issue of the case of the unknown gunmen is also an elephant in the room. Um, if these unknown government gunmen um, were to surface, or if the issue of these unknown gunmen are not dealt with, because again. There have been times in, in, in the past where these unknown gunmen were termed as IPOP members, where IPOP has come out to say, these are not our people, we're not responsible. Um, all of these policemen that we have in Anambra, will it be able to address the issue of unknown gunmen? And why wait till elections um, you know, draw near for this kind of security to be pulled to Anambra? You know, it's, it's quite sad that today in Nigeria, uh, the government, the sovereign state, is uh, expressing a show of force uh, with a group that they have uh, declared uh, that are uh, disbanded and, and, and X, Y, Z. It's quite sad because uh, what is happening in the number is obviously going to affect that election because no average Nigerian will see those heavy security. I will be free to come out and exercise the civic right. And like I was saying before, uh, the mix up, they needed to have uh, engaged with the stakeholders of a number of states and to like the extent in the Southeast to be able to address the peculiar security challenges that are happening in the South. And what is the peculiar situation? The way you come out, the citizens or the so called outlaws in the Southeast, the might you put on them, you don't do. You don't use the same commissary major in the north where it is happening and everybody is seen and everybody's life is in danger. And so everybody in the south is feeling that what you are doing to them, you are shortchanging them, uh, you are being biased to them, and uh, you are not giving them their rights as citizens in this country. And so an average uh, uh, man from the south is, uh, believes that whatever you are doing to these people, you're calling terrorists or whatever name you're giving them, you are not being fair to their fellow brothers and sisters. And so it becomes a challenge that whatever solution you're bringing to solve a security a challenge to a very sensitive geopolitical region like the South is in this country, the citizens are not believing it. It means that it's going, uh, the solution is not going to come at all, if possible, not in good time. Now you have an election at hand. There was every need for you to come out and then dialogue with the stakeholders of the Southeast for you to be able to conduct this election rather than engaging yourself into a show of force with a group that you have told the entire world that you disbanded. What they are doing today is probably because they are showing the whole world that yes, the iPod that they have disbanded has control of the Southeast. And that is why today they are forcing the people of a number of states to come out and perform a civil duty. And I put this at home and simply gives a directive, and the people are ready to obey them. So it's going to be a huge challenge in the number. And we just cross our hands, and we're looking at how they want to achieve this because I think it's a hurricane task for that exercise to go smoothly for Nigerians to believe in. Hmm. Let me come back to you, um, Francis, again. Um, most of this uh, is because you understand what's happening in the Southeast. Let's quickly look at the, the, the people who are running for these offices. Um, come next week. I mean, we're just a few days away from the elections in Anambra State. And I want to quickly look at some of these politicians and the role that they play um, within that catchment area. Um, we know that we have an Andy Uba, we have Ifan Uba, we have um, Valentine Ozigbo, who's for the People's Democratic Party. And we have the former CBN governor um, also uh, on that lineup. These are the four uh, most known um, contestants for that particular governorship um, candidacy. Um, we are, we, we've seen reports about Andy Uba and, um, you know, the case that he has in the U.S. where many have said that he should not be running, but he's running on the platform 
of the ruling party, which is the APC. Um, what, what, what exactly um, sh would his candidacy be offering for, for you as a political analyst, would be offering the people of Anambra? Uh, well, when, 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 when you put up all the candidates like you've just done, um, if um, we were in a country where we believe in justice, where we believe in uh, men that have character, men of honor and proven integrity, um, anyone that has a case to answer, be it in Nigeria or outside of Nigeria, should not ordinarily be contesting an election. And I think that uh, I feel so sad because over time you notice that the ruling party have always featured candidates, not only in Anambra State, in other states, people with questionable character. And they work clandestinely for such persons to win. And then you ask, and then you ask you know, yourself, how is this man going to deliver good governance to the people? So in other words, it's not about the credibility of the candidate. It's about the political party. Hmm. And we need to move from that for this country to move forward. We can't keep, you know, because you are the ruling party or because you want to assume the ruling party, whatever you've done or whatever case you have is wiped out. So we should have a system. That, I keep saying it. INEC has not been fair to the electorates. Because INEC should be given the power to also carry out due diligence on anyone that wants to contest an election. But INEC is not a prosecutor, neither are they a, a law enforcement agency. They no, are an say, umpire. I didn't, say that, I didn't say they should prosecute. I know, but, I'm but, I, but I'm saying... Uh, in, in the terms and uh, in the terms and reference in t uh, you know for candidacy um INEC does not necessarily have the powers to say we're dropping this person because we think he has a case that's not part of INEC's responsibility is it so long let me put it this way so long as we keep shifting the blame we keep saying it is this body that is responsible it is this organization that is responsible we will keep having mediocre in governance. We need to have an electoral process that on its own eliminates you. A system that works independent of whichever party you belong to. We need to have that. You I... can't tell me that you can't tell me that somebody who has a case to answer would bring himself up for election and you know, nobody says anything about it. Nobody says anything about it. Yet, other people who are contesting that are in other parties, they have been hunted by EFCC on a daily basis. In other words, it means that, yes, APC wants to take over Anambra State at all costs. Okay. It's not about who is coming up. It's not about the integrity of the persons involved. It's about the political party. We need to move above beyond that. Let, let's quickly lo run through the other candidates, and then, of course, I have a question for Kwanam before we wrap up. Um, we also have um, Ifan Yuba, who owns, you know, the football club FC Ifan Yuba. He, hold, he, he owns a string of petrol stations, um, and he's also uh, a member of the National Assembly. Um, he seems to be loved by many and also loathed by many because... Um, many have accused him or pointed fingers uh, at him in terms of land grabbing. So again, um, let's look at the person of um, Ifan Yuba and the chances that he, 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 he's, the chance he has. And of course, what exactly would the Anambra people be looking for if he were to be the chosen candidate? Francis. Hey, are you referring to that to me? Yes, yes. Well, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be on air to um, uh, begin to canvass vote for any of the candidates. I believe they've done their homework, and I believe that the Anambra people should by now know what they want. What we want, or what we want, as I am from the southeast, what we want is good governance. What we want is credible individuals occupying political offices. And I think that the other black people are smart enough to know who is more credible and who would be able to give them good, gov good governance and develop their state. I leave that to them. Let's talk about, um, quickly, Valentine Ezekiel before we talk about the CBN governor. Uh, Valentine Ezekiel is a member of the People's Democratic Party, and many have said that, well, he might have the support of the former vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party and former governor of the state, uh, Peter Albee. 
Um, do we see, do you as uh, an analyst see the powers of the PDP strong enough in this election? Do they bring a heavy weight to this battle or is he a stronger candidate as the others who he's going head to head with? Well, PDP has not redeemed this image. Let us, let us put it as it is. As a political party, it has not. Um, it still has a lot of um, uh, laundering to do, image laundering. PDP owes the Nigerian people an apology, which they have not tendered. Until they do that, you know, I, I would not sit back and support anything PDP. They owe us an apology for what we have in this country today. It started with them. So we can't just, I don't believe, I'm not one of those who would say, sweep it under the carpet. No. So anybody that is, you know, going with PDP, you're on your own. Okay. That's, my own, that's my position on it. And finally, um, Charles Chukuma Soludo, who is former central bank governor, of course, uh, yeah, he's um, tried before to run for this office. And, and, and here we are again. This time he has the support of not just um, the party, APCA, but he does have the support of his governor. Even though we have heard before now that um, um, rumor has it that um, before Obiano became the governor, he worked hand in hand um, with the governor and um, uh, um, Uba to get Obiano into office. And there was a gentleman's agreement that at, at different points, these men will become governors of the state. How do we see this play out? Uh, well, you see, this is what's going to play out uh, on the election day. It's actually going to be between two political parties. You can note it down. It's going to be between APC and APGA. It's not about the candidates anymore. It's going to be between APC and APGA. And I know that when it comes to that, uh, I believe that APGA will take the day. I, I believe that Charles, uh, Charles Soludo has what it takes in this 21st century. He has what it takes to you know, carry on with the development of Anambra State. I am not. I'm not. Um, I'm not a fan of his. But I just believe that um, yes, you know, his antecedents speaks for him. But he's a first uh, timer. He, so how how are you so certain that he'll be able to do it? He's never really he been be a career politician. He, so. he would. He would. He would. You, you, you see, you, you you look at what somebody has done in the past, and what lies ahead, and you'll be able to know if he has the capacity to do that. I believe. I strongly believe that. You know, a child solo do will do wonders in an ambassador. All right. And finally, Quantum, let me come back to you on security uh, on security grounds. We've seen the NSA um, ask that they behave themselves. We've heard the presidency talk tough, um, you know, in Anambra. But if you were to be on the same table um, having conversations with these men at the top in terms of, you know, how to handle security come that day, before that day, and of course, after that day. What will be your two cents? Well, the, 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 the issue at the moment is that the deployment has been done, and uh, we can only advise them uh, to try and be professional in the way they are going to handle issues in the number. Uh, they shouldn't go there in the name of election and escalate more crisis for us in the southeast. It, uh, uh, Anambra uh, is one of the commercial centers of this country and should be tra treated very with key glues because we have a lot to lose uh, if there is spring of crisis from that area because any provocation in that area at the moment will bring crisis. Uh, so the deployment has been done. Uh, if I had the opportunity to, for my opinion, to be heard, I think they would have seek other means of peace and uh, no more elections would have gone out because uh, very sensitive groups have come out publicly to offer what would have been solutions to the issues in the southeast, like Ohanese and the likes of them. And the presidents have ignored them, so they have gone to the level of sure of force. But uh, the, the uniform men that are there should know that uh, it is the Nigerian people that pay them. They should be professional in what they are doing and in service to their fatherland. And so we urge them to be professional. And that's all I can say for now. Well, thank you very much. Terence Quanum is a security expert. And of course, Francis Chilaka is a political affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. Thank you. All right.
Thank you all for staying with us. We will take a short break because coming on next on Plus Politics, a group in River State wants Rotimiya Mechi to contest for presidency in 2023. We'll take a short break.